One of the great things about the PlayStation over the last few years is its strong lineup of first-party exclusives. Developer Ready at Dawn had proven their talent with their God of War games on the PSP, and they were ready to take a spin on an all-new franchise. Released in 2015, The Order 1886 was set to be another great first-party title, but after its launch, the game received mostly mixed reception. Nevertheless, I was still interested in checking out the game at some point, and now I have finally played through this supernatural third-person shooter. What do I like about this game? Here are my game reflections for The Order 1886. Easily one of the most enticing things about The Order 1886 is the setting. Set in Victorian-era London, the game stars Sir Galahad, a Knight of the Order. The Order has been around since the days of King Arthur, and thanks to the rejuvenating waters of the Holy Grail, the Knights have kept Britain safe from both human and supernatural threats. Galahad has been a loyal Knight of the Order for a great many years, and together with his fellow Knights, he is fighting to keep London safe from a new threat of half-breed lichens. Armed with cutting-edge weaponry courtesy of Nikola Tesla, Galahad battles against the half-breeds, but soon discovers an even greater plot, one that could shake the very foundations of London and the Order. While I quite enjoyed the story of this game, I must say that the story does take some predictable turns. Thankfully, the other story elements keep things engaging with several historical characters and supernatural foes such as the Lycans, and even at one point, vampires. I like the journey that Galahad's character takes over the course of the story, and I also really like the supporting cast, particularly the suave Frenchman, Lafayette. While the story taken as a whole hit some familiar beats, I genuinely did enjoy the journey it took me on, and considering the game leaves itself open for a follow-up, I would be very curious to see where the story goes next, if another game is made. The historical aspects meshed with the more fantastical elements made for an intriguing tale, and I hope we will be able to continue the story of Sir Galahad someday. The Agamemnon, what's its status? It has already departed on its way to Portsmouth for its last port of call before it leaves for the Americas. And the security detail on board? Have they been made aware of the rebel threat? For all we know, the guard detail could have been infiltrated by the conspirators. We need to unravel this without arousing suspicion. The Council should at least be apprised of this situation. We don't have the luxury of seeking the Council's permission. We're getting aboard that ship. And how would you suggest we do that, Mon General? It is already airborne. That should be easy. You read my mind. There are three central mechanics to the Order's gameplay. Third-person shooting, item investigation, and quick-time events. The cover-based third-person shooting galleries take up a majority of the game's runtime, and I have to say, as someone who doesn't always enjoy this type of genre, I was actually surprised by how much fun I had with the Order. I believe it comes down to the various firearms, most of which are developed by Tesla himself. Weapons like the arc gun are powerful and satisfying to use, and there's enough variety among the weapons to keep things fresh and fun. As a side note, you will generally be fighting against rebels for most of the battles, but every so often you'll square off against some lichens. The lichens have a relatively easy pattern, but still, fighting them mixes things up and requires a slightly more aggressive style of play. During combat, a meter will fill up, and once it is full, you can perform the Black Sight ability, which slows time and lets Galahad unload on enemies with his pistol. It's a cool ability and is very useful in some of the game's later firefights. Another tool Galahad brings to the fight is the Black Water, a small vial of water from the Holy Grail that can get the knight back on his feet if he should take too much damage. However, it takes a few seconds before you can use it, and most of the time, if you reach this down state, it's pretty much game over. Several times throughout the game, Galahad can also use stealth abilities, which are tied to the game's quick-time events. I am of the opinion that quick-time events are at their best when directly complementing on-screen action, and for the most part, this is true in this game. You'll have extended QTE sequences in some of the cutscenes, and the two boss fights in the game are entirely QTE-based. I will say that, as visually impressive as they are, the boss fights are a bit disappointing, 
because there are only two, and both of them play out exactly the same way. I wish they had implemented a blend of the shooting mechanics, but even with these faults, they are still kind of tense and exciting. Overall, the QTEs didn't take me out of the experience, and I enjoyed the way some of them were implemented. The third and final aspect of gameplay is the item exploration. In many of the game's chapters, you can interact with certain objects. Galahad will pick the item up and get a closer look at it, and then you can rotate the object, which can sometimes lead to more lore information or hidden messages. There really isn't much more to this mechanic, but it does speak to the game's amazing production values for how beautifully designed these objects and the game's environments are. Plus, Sackboy is in this game, which was a very pleasant surprise. I should mention that the Order 1886 is on the somewhat short side, an aspect that was one of the main criticisms of the game. The whole game takes about five to six hours to complete, and at the game's original full price, I can understand why some people may have not liked this. That being said, the game never really drags, and it is a roller coaster from beginning to end. Game length has never been a huge issue for me though, so in the case of the Order 1886, it felt just as long as it needed to be. Far and away, the most impressive thing about this game is its visuals. The game has absolutely stunning graphics, and the facial animations and highly detailed characters and environments are really a sight to behold. Everything runs seamlessly together, and I really did marvel at this game's sights and sounds. The Order 1886 also boasts a haunting, melancholy soundtrack. Jason Graves, the talented composer who worked on music for games like Dead Space and Until Dawn, brings some of his best pieces of music for The Order. Some of my personal favorite tracks include the powerful medleys of the Knight's theme and the creepy, haunting track of The Scourge. The music heightens the big moments of the game in all the best ways, and the eerie male choir vocals are used to excellent effect. Even if this game may fall short in some areas, it is definitely not in the music and visuals. Even though it took me a good while to check out this game, I'm very happy I did. I had fun with the gameplay mechanics, and I enjoyed the world and characters that the Order sets up. I would love to see how the story of Galhad would continue, and I do hope that we'll see the Order return in some form in the future. Hopefully next time, the game will be even more fun and engaging for players, and will improve on parts where the game needs a little fine-tuning. I found The Order 1886 to be an intriguing and fun game, and if you haven't checked it out already and want to give it a shot, I would recommend looking into it. It was a nice surprise for me, and it might be for you too. How did you arrive here so quickly? Skill, love. I must admit, you do move fast for a man of your age. I not care to be reminded of his decrepitude by a fair damsel. My lord. This damsel would never be so callous as to do such a thing. Sure is he. Would you ever? <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode of Game Reflections. What are your thoughts on the Order 1886? Feel free to share in the comments below. Until next time, keep having great adventures, everyone. When the noble Arthur sought to contest for truage with the Roman Emperor Lucius, he did not trouble himself with issues of jurisdiction. Do not presume to quote history to me, Sir Percival. <laughs> I've seen more of history than you shall ever know. I remind the knights here assembled that the threat to this order comes not only from without, but within. <laughs>